six, seven months now, so we have some data to share with you, and, and it's, it, it's actually a really good success story. So validating non-collegiate learning, the bottom line. So what does it take to make learning creditworthy? We're all talking about that. Alternative pathways to credit, PLA, OER. And what learning resources should we recommend? All of these things all go into the partnership program that SAIL and Excelsior are, are working on currently. So what is academic credit anyways? It's, it's assurance that someone knows something appropriate for a particular academic program. At Excelsior College, our motto is what you know is more important than where or how you learned it. So we don't care where you learned it, we just want to know what you learned. That's what we're going to assess, not where or where you took it. Both traditional college courses and credit by exam do this quite well. Colleges still must decide what outside credit to accept. And the next presentation I do in two about an hour, we're going to talk about that, different colleges. But right now, at Excelsior College, we take everything. We are a credit aggregator, so it doesn't matter if it's Clep, Dante's, you name it, we take it. So again, what you know is more important than where and how you learned it. Excelsior College, RUXL, which is our credit by exam, measures what you know, independent of any particular learning experience. It's convenient, cost effective. We have 60 plus exams, 51 of those exams cost you $95. And that's $95 total. There's no seat fee, no hidden fees, you pay $95, you pass our exam, you get three college credits. You go to Sailor, you take their course, doesn't cost you anything, you link from Sailor right to Excelsior College exams, take our, take, take our exam, $95. And they are all ACE recommended, and they cover a range of introductory and upper level topics. And we do have a, Excelsior College is the largest online nursing program. So we have a very, very strong nursing program. And independent study resources, including open educational resources. We compiled an OER guide. And if anybody would like that OER guide, you can go to our website, or you can come see me after, give me your card, I'll be more than happy to email that out to you. So colleges can use credit by exam. How to relieve overcrowding? Look at the state of California. In community college, they can't get a course. They have to take other courses because they can't get in. Come to Excelsior College. Go to Salem. Take a course that you want. Come take our exam. We will put it on an official college transcript and send it out for you. Assist students who have failed the required course. Nobody wants to fail. Everybody wants to succeed. Come to Excelsior and go to Salem. We'll help you. We'll give you the tools necessary that you need. You can build an entire degree completion. We have an assessment-based degree at Excelsior College. We've had it for a couple of years now. So when you hear the governor of Texas, the governor of California, the governor of Florida, all of a sudden get on the nightly news and say, we can get a degree for $10,000. Our president, John Ebersole, is sitting there going, Hello, we have that. It's called an assessment-based degree. It's a bachelor's and an associate's. So we have that type of a program. And you can help prepare for that by taking all the same courses. So now I'm going to turn it over to Devin, and he's going to talk about the program a lot. Thanks. So one of the main reasons uh, we work with Excelsior here um, and is because of the Sailor model and how we differentiate ourselves from other online courses and particular moves. Uh, the main key being that our courses are available all the time, anytime. So that is useful for Excelsior students themselves and that they 
are able to work through our courses at their own pace whenever they like. Uh, they can come in and you know, come out. Uh, it's really convenient for their time schedule. It's also useful for our partnership with Excelsior because they go through our courses and they vet our courses. And the whole reason the whole partnership started was the fact that our courses were online for free with no paywall, no barriers, and they were able to look for OER and came across our site and be able to go through our courses piece by piece and see where they matched up and where they could be useful for their exams. It kind of kicked off the whole reason we started working together to deepen that and say, all right, this course might be 75% of what your exam does. What can we do to make that up to 100%? Um, the other key difference between Sailor and other online courses, particularly MOOCs, is the fact that we are truly open in the sense that all of our courses are CCDY. Uh, so obviously we, like, we want people to come through our site and use our courses and uh, work through it on work through it on their own pace on sailor.org, but we understand that other institutions, faculty, teachers want to adapt courses, and it's not a one-size-fits-all world, and we make it so that you can take our courses, you can adapt it, you can make it better, you can redistribute it. That's what we want. We want to see kind of OER. Um, and that's not the case, obviously, with the other ones that we've heard a lot about. Right, thanks. Um, so, how does this benefit in regards to credit by exam? So, Excelsior College came to us primarily because they had this idea and this mission to provide students with assessments to teach them or to assess what they already know. Uh, sometimes there are gaps in, in individual knowledge. Uh, people might learn a lot from their work experience or their prior college experience and, and everything they've done in their life. But there are pieces where they might need to learn more. And Excelsior is committed to an affordable higher education, and part of doing that is pointing students to resources that can help further that education and do so for free. And by pointing them to Sailor courses, it's providing them free, no textbook cost resources to study for the material. Now the case being that we have complete courses that you can do so that it matches up 100% with the exams. Uh, and as I said, self-paced, which our students, Sailor students, are non-traditional learners. Most Excelsior students are non-traditional learners. They're coming from places where they are working adults and looking to further their education. They're looking to finish a degree. They are students who don't have access to traditional education and are looking for something that fits their needs. They're not the traditional 18, 24-year-old student. Um, but even those 18, 24-year-old students are now looking for cost-effective measures for getting education. Uh, we have seen student debt skyrocket, and what we're trying to do is provide those students with an affordable option to do something different and to kind of take charge of their learning experience. Um, and comparing Sailor courses to Excelsior exams is kind of one of the ways that we're doing that. Uh, so, I mean, we very much see that Sailor courses, OER in particular, and uh, credit by exam, very symbiotic. Uh, some of the strengths of Sailor courses and OER that we've discovered are that our learners are very motivated. When we started Sailor, we didn't have a partnership with Excelsior or other places where students were seeking credit. They were taking our courses because they were motivated individuals who wanted to learn. Uh, they didn't have access to education, and they were willing to go through our courses and learn for the sake of learning because now they have that opportunity. Um, uh, throughout our courses, we obviously do assessments. We let students see what they're doing, make sure that they're on the path to being successful in that course, uh, which ties into Excelsior because as we point students to there, that's kind of where they're going to be that high stakes test for this is where the credit's going to come in. Um, and actually, I'll let Mark talk a little bit more about the UXL part and kind of the strength of their exams and how those are assessed. Right. Well, the biggest thing whenever you want to look at a learner, you got to make sure it's, that's the actual person that's taking the exam. So above, you got to make sure that you're valid. You are who you say you are. You are who you say took the course and are taking the exam. So you actually have to take these exams at a Pearson test center. And there's 4,000 of them worldwide, but you got to come with a form of identification. So I can't take the course and then she can't take the exam for me. You know, as much as you, you know, there are kids in college that try to do that, you're not going to get away with it with our UXL program. 
Uh, test security meets national standards, and, and we make sure that, that we go above and beyond to make sure that we meet all the standards. And assessment of content mastery is comprehensive, so it's everything. So when we, when we develop these exams, we have a whole team of psychometricians, a whole team of item writers, a whole team of item banks to make sure that these are the right assessments. And that's why our relationship with SAIL is so good because we kind of go off each other. We look at their courses, they look at our exams, and if there is a gap, we work together to make sure it's filled. So the courses that we're recommending to our exams match up 100%. So that kind of leads to uh, one of the case studies. Right now we have three exams that are, or three courses that are 100% matches. Um, Excel Street exams, uh, instructor psychology being one of those. Uh, we kind of started uh, mapping out which courses to work with when Excelsior published their first OER oh yeah, content guide where they list Sailor, and there were a handful of courses. Some of those courses for Sailor were in various states of development. Um, we kind of chose the ones that were furthest along that had been you know, peer reviewed, that had uh, great 100% hostable content, the possible making the most use of flexible uh, Creative Commons licenses for the individual pieces of content. Um, one of the keys to being able to do this is the fact that Excelsior content guides and their OER guides and their exams, they publish the specific learning outcomes and objectives and topics that are being covered on those exams. Sailor courses obviously do that as well through other courses. Uh, very first thing on each purpose of course, you see the learning, the learning objectives that our course is teaching to. At the unit level, you see those learning objectives as well. So we're able to have our consultants who develop these courses kind of fill the map of what does the Sailor course teach and what is the Excelsior exam assessing and where are, those, where are there any gaps. And if there are any gaps, then we can fill those gaps with new OER and we can point students to a course that we can say, if you're working through this course, you do all this content, you take our assessment to test yourself along the way, then you're going to be prepared when we send you to Excelsior to take this exam. Uh, so the result of that was a, a branch off variation of our previously existing introduction to psychology course, uh, a new version, our EXC version, which matches up to the UXL exam. Uh, so I said there are other courses already. We did a single variable calculus and a principles of the <coughs> economics course. So there are three that are live on our site right now. Uh, in the future, we have six more that are pretty much ready to go as far as internal course development. Um, and then Mark said they have about 60 exams. Uh, I believe in all, about 20 or so are good su subject matches for existing Sailor courses. So once some of those Sailor courses get a little further along in development, uh, we can match those up as yeah, well. Yeah, you will see when you get a copy of the OER guide that every exam, one of the first, the top one or two OERs that we want students to do with Sailor courses. So that's, you know, that's the belief that we have in Sailor courses with our exams. And then the uh, exciting potential is the fact that Excelsior is committed to building more of these exams. They want more options for students to have assessment for what they know and what they've learned, regardless of where they've learned it. But they understand that one of those places where they can learn it is on sailor.org. And so the fact that we do have 300 college level courses, many of which are extremely far along in development, and we are very transparent about what's in those courses, Excelsior can work with us to develop new exams with that content in mind, so that they develop an exam and right away it's an actual for Sailor course and we can start putting students uh, to a credit option for what's otherwise a free open online course uh, that previously might have not had a credit option. So let's get into some numbers, because I'm a numbers person. You can tell a whole story about numbers, and they do tell a story. So current course exam matching, we have three. Students that are currently old, enrolled in the sale of courses are 2,500, roughly. So that's how many students are taking a sale of course right now. That's for you. So students registered for the exams. 45 students have registered for the exams. Five of those students have registered for multiple exams. 30 exams taken. Now these students came directly from the Sailor website. We have a special URL that after you take the course, you can click on it and it takes you right to the landing page on Excelsior College where you can register for that exam. So that's how we track who's coming. Out of those, and the success rate, 90% have succeed, successfully passed our exam. And they're not easy exams. Um, a quick story, my son is a freshman in high school. And he came home and said, hey dad, you're not gonna believe this. I can take this course in high school and I can take this exam and get college credit. So I looked at him, I'm like, 
you really have no idea what your dad does. Do you? <laughs> and he goes, what do you mean? I said, Logan, what is this program called? And he goes, credit by exam. And I'm like, you really have no idea. <laughs> so again, it's, it, it's a funny story, but it's a success rate. So he said, so I can take your exam and pass. I'm like, Logan, this is not one of those exams that you can just study the night before. It takes the whole semester of work and crams it into two hours. So you have to figure this out. It takes about, we give people six months to study for this. And he goes, yeah, I'm good. Uh, I'm not taking the exam. <laughs> so, um, but if you look at it, those 30 exams at $95, again, that's it. You pay $95, there's no other hidden fees, no seat fees, no fee when you get to the test center. <clears throat> It's going to cost $2,800, $2,850 to be exact. Our courses are $1,500 at Excel City College. So 30 of those courses, 30 of those students taking a course equals 45 grand. By taking the credit by exam option, saved over $42,000. Now again, I'm going back to I have a freshman and I'm looking to see where college tuition is going. Where do you think I'm going to point my son? <laughs> to, to help offset that cost. So again, that's what's in it. And whenever I talk about, the question is, what's in it for me? That's always the question when you start promoting something or you're starting to sell something. What's in it for me? Everybody wants to save money? That's what's in it for you. That's what's in it for the students out there. We are together creating that pathway to affordable higher education. Yeah, so just to kind of think back on that, I mean, numbers, we've seen some really big numbers here so far, as far as textbook savings and the $300,000, $700,000. Um, we're expecting to get there. This is early stages. These courses have just been launched. Um, that those 30 exams taken are the ones specific from tracking codes, so we know that other students are using the self student content guide, are already registered and self students might not be navigated through that uh, link. Um, and so, if we know that that number is already higher, this is the one that we know for sure, and we're going to we see that the potential for this growing. I think going from three exams to nine exams, going further, having these up for a long time. So, what do you do after you pass an exam? You can call or email, uh, you know, our information and say, "I even want to request an official transcript of my sale course. I pass this exam. No problem." We will put your grade, your exam grade, on an official Excelsior College transcript for $12, and we will mail that and send that on your behalf to any institution that you would like. We've been doing this for 42 years, from, since 1971, and we've sent our transcript, our credit by exam program, to thousands of colleges and universities across the country. And I can probably count on one hand how many have refused because they're a Excel to your college exam or your Excel exam. Yes? So I'm assuming that it says on the transcript that it's credit by exam. Is that it, it'll, it has a notation that it says exam, examination. Okay. Yep. And does Excelsior um, acknowledge these courses in any of their degree programs? Yes. Okay. Yep. And uh, what we try to tell students, we give students options if they come to Excel to college. And we tell them, listen, here's your path where you can take all exams to get you your degree. You can take courses or you can combine them and we'll recognize both. We've sent student transcripts out that list courses and exams all on the same transcript. Oh. Uh, we'll just, we got two more slides and then we'll take questions and I don't want to get red flagged. So, <laughs> so we know what Excelsior is doing. Uh, Excelsior obviously they accept all the exams that students pass themselves, but like you said, they also act as kind of a transfer so that students can look and go to other places. Other schools are doing this, and we work with them. We work with Thomas Edison State College. They have a test of exam program. Um, we've similarly done both ends of that. We've realigned the course to match one of their exams. They are in the process of developing brand new test of exams to match our courses. One of those is already existing. Um, we informally, we don't work directly with College Board and CLEP, but because they similarly show what's on those exams and say the learning objectives, we've been able to align uh, two of our courses to those as well um, so that we can provide students with further options. And one of the ways, one of the key strategies that Salem uses in doing this is trying to be efficient and not duplicate our 
work. So we'll look at the courses that match up best to Excelsior that nobody else has. Or if there's two places that have them, where does the Sailor course best align? And where can we put our resources to make sure that all the work that we're doing is giving students the most options as possible and try, if they're trying to get to that degree completion route. Um, and we also want other people to replicate this model. Um, obviously, Excelsior has taken on a big, a big share of the burden of the credit by exam program, but individual students or individual institutions can be doing these at an institutional level with challenge exams. We already talked about it uh, in his presentation earlier about kind of unbundling the process of higher education and perhaps schools being the assessment piece and acknowledging that students are coming to them with education from wherever they come from. So it could be a case of having challenge exams right within your institution. If that's the case, see what courses we have, see what matches up, see if that's you think that it's an option that students can count on um, if you want to work directly with us so that we can perhaps realign those courses to better suit uh, your what your school represents and what your school accepts as higher learning, uh, then we can do that. We're particularly interested in doing that if you are going to take those exams and provide them nationally, like it tells you it does, and give students options to come to you, take them not just at your school, but go elsewhere. Like California State School shouldn't just perhaps have challenge exams that only count at that school. They should be able to transfer other places. So we want to work with schools who are willing to do that. Uh, so, the conclusions are obvious. I mean, we've heard a lot about the potential for OER to save students money on textbooks, but there's so much more than that. Uh, OER can save one students money on pretty much everything. Tuition, credit, uh, textbooks, and we obviously, in the past year, we've had a lot of people talk about the potential for a $10,000 degree. That already exists. There are institutions that recognize prior learning, that have credit by exam, that do various options, of recognizing that students are coming to them with informal learning, much of that learning from OER, and they can pass that they can pass that savings back on to the student and give them an extremely affordable degree. So, with that being said, we got in without getting red flags, so that's always a plus. We got two minutes left, so we'll open up to questions. And, and if we don't get to all your questions, feel free to come up to Devin or I after. We're more than happy to talk with you. Devin, uh, at our school. I think we need like a flexible self-based course as well. And my question is, uh, how do you set yours up? Do you give them a suggested schedule to follow, but you don't hold them down to the particular week or day that you made that assignment? How do you make yours self-based? So we work with professors who have taught these courses at accredited institutions, and we ask them to first look at what are the learning objectives that a student taking this course in a traditional school will need to master if they want to say that they understand this stuff Once we And we kind of use Bloom's taxonomy to do that. Once we've done that, we have them build a blueprint of the course with all the topics that are needed in order to prepare students to meet those learning objectives. From there, we have our in-house OER specialist work with our professors to find the content that they compare to, that, uh, to those topics to match to those learning outcomes. Once we put that course up, though, we do put time advisories for how long this should take, but once it's up, it's always up. It's not like a move where you enroll and then 15 weeks later, it's not available to you anymore. Of course, it's available to you anytime. So we give suggestions on how long it should take, and we give them the step-by-step -step process of go through it in this order, and that's how you complete it, but they can take as much time as they want. It's completely self-paced, asynchronous. It's kind of student-centered in that. So there's no penalty for taking an assessment. Not all the time. Nope. That's great. Yeah. How are you funded? We are funded it's from Michael Saylor. <laughs> 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 <He's our> <laughs> <trustee>. <laughs> uh, so it's a single individual who believes in this and is just funding it. Yes. Yeah. He is really putting it <laughs> <laughs> I have a question about Logan. So you suggested that he couldn't take the course because it would take somebody six months. Let's say those children of the high school era are probably mentally capable of taking some of this. Is there any reason why you couldn't let him into the course environment and perhaps set up an environment where some college credits went down to the high school level, thereby allowing some at-risk students to we, enter college? We actually credits. have a partnership with Assuming mom. your child is a genius. No, that's why I won't have my son take it, because he's not disciplined enough. Um, 
and, and he'll be the first one to admit it. Okay. Um, but we do have a partnership with Mountain View uh, right here in Utah with our high school students. At, and you know, I was talking with Elena this morning, and there's like four or five students that just started down that path yeah. of, 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 of the course they go on for the exam. So that's a big push from our president is to get so you're high school not, students. So you're not delineating? Yes, the, the no, first, and we, no. We're, no. I just, I like to tell that story because my son is just, when, when, when he told me that, and it's like right on the kitchen counter, and it says credit by exam. No, no, no. And, no, and no, I'm just no, like, no, you've no, got to be kidding. One thing we can do is come to the Sailor course, take our version of the assessment, and see what he already knows. Yeah. And it will point students to the units where they might not know all that information, so that rather than spend the hundred hours that we say it'll take to take a course, you can go right to the units where you don't have master of those subjects, master those subjects, and then save the time. Right, but so much, the process. But so much of what we could do is launch that generation yes. so that we can't even see it as an option yeah. because it's so far out of their reach. And it would just to get two or three things under their belt. It's, it's, it's huge. Sure. And, 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 it's, and if I had known about this when I was in, in undergrad, I would have probably done it for yeah, someone yeah. too. Okay. Thank you. Great. So, any more questions can go <laughs> inside here? We need